Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to our very quick HDR analyze and HDR settings video. But before we start, let me explain a couple of things. So first of all, you might see some stuttering from time to time. That's not because of the game is stuttering, that's because of my recording. I can't get rid of this very weird behavior. And also, please ignore all the bending, what you can see here right now in the sky. This is not when I'm playing the game on my LG OLED TV or the S95C. This is really just right now because of the recording. But that's not a big deal because all what we need to do today is actually focusing on the your left top corner and on the right bottom corner because all what we need is the histogram actually and the yeah, a couple of numbers and I would say let's take a closer look on HDR after the latest update in Cyberpunk. The game still does not support the HDR system level calibration at least not on the Xbox Series X where I tested the game. I'm testing here the Xbox Series X version. I don't have access to the PlayStation 5 version anymore and I was trying actually to yeah, analyze the PC version but Reshade keeps crashing on me. I need to find a, another way actually to get this HDR analyze tool running. But so far or for now we just yeah, focusing on the Xbox Series X version and again please ignore the stuttering. That's not in the real game, that's just here my recording and I'm working hard on this that I'm getting rid of this, but unfortunately it's not possible right now. Anyway, let's have a closer look on HDR right now and as you can see, when we're looking at the histogram, um, you can actually see that some points of the game are actually reaching almost zero in terms of the HDR black level rays or in terms of the HDR black level floor but most of the time and all the moving parts what you have actually see on the histogram is actually the game when we're moving all the static parts are the user interface or stuff like that you can actually see that the yeah, game itself right now never reaches actually close to zero and that means we have always some sort of elevated black level floor. So don't get me wrong, this might be right now perfectly okay because we have yeah, everywhere light, everywhere is a little bit light. So that means we shouldn't have, of course, um, a complete dark scene. But, and that's the case we have in this game, very dark parts as well and it doesn't look much better. In this example, when we're moving along the corridor here, we can see that at some point we're actually coming to a place or a location or a spot where is yeah, there's almost no light anymore. We have just this LED lights here with uh, 1000 nits maximum peak brightness and this is actually the exact setting what I have um, done in the settings menu. It's actually a little bit higher, it's 1100 something around that, but here in the corner um, it's actually really really dark and there's some some stuff here but you can see that even here the HDR black level floor never never reaches absolute zero we have always a little bit higher than 0 0.05 which is probably not not a big big deal it really depends uh, in what environment of course you're playing and what picture mode you're actually using because what I found is and I can't show you this here if you now use HGHG on an LG OLED TV the HDR black level floor is actually not too bad at least what I found in a normal lit room it's very hard actually then to tell that there is some sort of HDR black level rays but as soon as you use dynamic tone mapping on all this area is absolutely grayish and looks very washed out Okay, so let's finish with HDR black level rays or let's say we're not talking any longer about this issue or maybe there is no issue because it actually looks quite good in HGHG as what I found. And if you remember, I was actually in one video, I think it was my latest video, I was actually recommending to use dynamic tone mapping on to get a better contrast, but I like to actually change my opinion now because what I found is after more testing that HGHG gives you just the better picture in general. You have maybe a, a little bit of a darker picture with my recommended settings, what I'm going to show you in a second, but in terms of the 
HDR black level floor, it is still much better because dynamic tone mapping on is just over brighten all the parts, even the yeah, lower end from the gamma or EOTF curve, which makes the picture then very washed out, unfortunately. And yeah, this is why I would not recommend right now to use dynamic tone mapping on in Cyberpunk. And now let's take a closer look on my recommended settings for Cyberpunk 27.7 after the latest update. So what you can see here right now is my setting for the LG G2 with a maximum peak brightness of around 1000 nits. And what I found is that yeah, the slider here, the maximum peak brightness slider is working pretty well as soon you take in consideration that you shouldn't change the tone mapping midpoint below 0.8. So let's say you like a tone mapping midpoint around 0.60, which is in my opinion way too dark. But anyway, as soon you go below 0.80, it may happen that you lose the maximum peak brightness and specular highlights. As you can see here right now, we talking about 950 nits, but as soon we increasing this again, just let me jump back in here. Let's just be, let's say we're just increasing this to three, the absolute maximum, which is of course also wrong. We would have now a maximum peak brightness of around 1100. So what I found is below 0 0.8, you will start losing the maximum peak brightness. What you have set in the maximum peak brightness setting here, 1000 nits in this case. So I would strongly recommend that if you set this up, stay above 0 0.8. My recommendation at the moment actually is around 1. And with setting 1, we have roughly around 1000 nits in specular highlights. When you set the maximum peak brightness slider, of course, to 1000 nits, if you increase this to the maximum setting, which is 1500, then you have close to 1500 or sometimes a little bit more. So in my opinion, this is not a bad setting. I found it sometimes maybe a little bit too dark because of the midpoint set just to one. But the thing is, in my opinion, that's a good compromise because you still have a much better HDR black level floor. Because as soon, and I can show you this actually, when we're just focusing here, we have now a HDR black level floor of around 0 0.05, but let me just increase this. And I honestly can't remember what was actually the standard setting, but let's just say we increase this to three, which of course is wrong. Can you see what now happened? We increased actually our yeah, our value from the HDR black level four floor by more than five, factor five, because now we have 0 .0, uh, 0 0.25 and it does look ugly actually in my opinion. So it's not very nice anymore. So you get a much brighter picture in general, yes, but you also lift the HDR black level floor. So again, my my recommendation actually is around one. You can of course go up maybe to 1.5 if you like this, but again, keep in mind, you will raise the HDR black level floor. As you can see here right now, it's a little bit higher than before, roughly around probably one or a little bit more than compared to 0 0.05, which is yeah much closer to perfect black. Anyway, this setting is of course up to you what you like more. And it depends, of course, if you like to use HGHG or dynamic tone mapping on. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show you a comparison today between HGHG and dynamic tone mapping on, but I have done this already in previous videos about Cyberpunk and HDR. So I will put some links in the description. So I would uh, highly recommend actually to check this out. But again, my recommendation is right now, if you can, don't use dynamic tone mapping on, give it a try with HGHG and I know it is a little bit darker compared to dynamic tone mapping on because you're not lifting any, yeah, any midtones or near black um, data actually, but it has a much better contrast at the end when we looking at the HDR black level floor. Because I told you this already, dynamic tone mapping on is just lifting up near black as well. And yeah, especially near black in this game is unfortunately lifted. And yeah, that's what you then see on your screen. So again, my recommendation is HGHG, 
with yeah setting up the maximum peak brightness accordingly to your TV or screen and then use the midpoint setting around 1. If you like to have it a little bit lower, don't go below 0.8. If you like to have it higher, I would recommend not to go above 1.5. And now I would say we're talking about the HDR implementation in general or the HDR implementation in terms of maximum peak brightness specular highlights and I have turned on the heat map on the HDR analyzer and that's why the picture looks actually like this at the moment. So we're focusing right now on yeah on colorful details on the picture not black and white like you can see here because that means actually the brightness is around SDR brightness which means above sorry below 200 nits actually everything else what you can see here in green yellow orange or purple or red means it's very very bright the redder it gets or if you have purple color that means actually we're talking about 1000 nits at the moment which i have set up on my or for my lg g2 and you can see we have a lot of different brightness um, yeah, shaders actually or not or, or details actually in specular highlights. So that means or that proves actually a point to me that it's actually a really great implementation and I said this already in previous videos. I like actually HDR in this game very very much because you have so many different details and just look at this at the moment the car when we actually are yeah, standing further away you can see there are some red details on the car when we're moving closer they're actually disappearing or changing that means you have different brightness as soon you actually walk up to a car and this is most likely the reflection from the sun so hdr implementation in this game game when we're just talking or when we're just focusing on these specular highlights it's actually really on a great level i really like it and the same counts here in terms of brightness. We have a lot of different brightness grades or different brightness details actually in specular highlights. And this is really something what I love. Can you actually see when I'm moving around how this is actually changing in terms of brightness? This is great HDR in my opinion. The only thing what is really missing now is actually a little bit of a better control of the HDR black level floor. But again, in terms of the HDR specular highlights, this is really one of the better looking games what I found so far. Here, the same great effect. As soon we go, we're coming closer, actually, we can see more details. And uh, in terms of uh, the whole picture, because what I found is when you walk up to this, because it's so bright, especially here right now, you can see this in purple, you can't see anything right now, but as soon you come closer, it actually gets better. And this is a, a great effect actually what you have in real life as well. So again, in terms of the specular highlights and maximum peak brightness and details in specular highlights, Cyberpunk is doing a fantastic job. And now it's time that we're taking a closer look on the color space what is used in Cyberpunk 2077 and what you can see here right now in black and white is SDR color, okay? Everything else what you can see here right now in yellow color is actually the DCI P3 color space. If, if you would now see some blue color here on the screen this would mean we're using actually the BT 2020 color space but so far I haven't found any BT 2020 in this game all what the game is using is slightly a little bit more than um, the SDR or Rec 709 color space a little bit of DCI P3 which is don't get me wrong it's fine but I was of course expecting a little bit more when we're talking about HDR I would like to see more color space used in the BT2020 format because this is exactly what we like to have when we're talking about HDR and this is what I would like to see on my S95C because right now this game looks exactly the same on the LG OLED TV or the S95C because color space is not much more than a Rec 709 and yeah the LG G2 is also capable of yeah showing great colors in the SDR color space of course and the DCI P3 color space but again I would like to see some BT2020 color space to perf to get actually a nice performance on my S95C. In this case I'm a little bit disappointed I was expecting a little bit more 
but I have to admit I of course did not test the whole game and maybe we have at some point in some levels, some locations, BT2020 color. Okay my friends, so that's it for this video and yeah again HDR in Cyberpunk is actually pretty good in my opinion. Despite the fact that we have a little bit of an issue with the HDR black level floor, but I think that with the right setting and I'm talking about the midpoint setting, which is the most important setting in the game, the setting around 1 is actually in combination with HGIG on my LG G2 pretty good. Maybe a little bit too dark, but to be very honest, that's a great compromise. In one of my last video, I mentioned dynamic tone mapping on is my choice actually to play this game, but after doing more testing, I found no dynamic tone mapping on is actually not the best idea because it will raise the HDR black level floor in this game even further and you end up with a washed out picture in some locations or some areas. So again, my recommendation is keep the midpoint around one if you can and if you like it and try the game with HGIG on an LG OLED TV. Thank you very much for watching me and I see you guys next time. Bye.